two measures of descriptive statistics that come out of a regression study are covariance and correlation coefficients. These are measures of association and do not necessarily tell us about the relationship between the two variables or for that matter if there is causality from one variable to the other. So covariance is so defined as I show here and measures the direction of the co-movements between the two variables x and y. And so if we come out with a negative covariance, it tells us the two variables move in opposite directions. If it's positive, it tells us the two variables move in the same direction. And so if one goes up, the other tends to go up. If one goes down, the other tends to go down. And again, that's a case where they have a, a positive covariance. So. Here's a quick example on how to calculate covariance using this simple data set for variables x and y. So looking at the formula right here, the numerator is going to multiply the difference between x and its the values of x and the mean and the values of y and the mean. So for the first for the first one right here, I show the results here, it's going to be 1 minus the mean of x which is shown here to be 3 that's going to give us negative 2. Hold that somewhere. And then for this second argument, it's going to be 1 minus the mean of 2 for y, which is going to give us negative 1. So negative 1 multiplied by negative 2, which you got over here, will give us positive 2. So in the same way, you do the same for the other values. And then we're going to sum them, and that's 7. Then we're going to divide by degrees of freedom, which since we use sample, we're going to have to divide by the sample size minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we have a sample size of 5, 5 pairs of observations that is. So 5 minus 1 is 4 divided into 7 will give us 1.75. So this tells us that the two variables x and y move in the same direction. By how much? We really don't know. We'll get to that shortly. But we can use Excel to easily calculate covariance as well. So right here, function is equal covar, and before you, uh, you finish typing it, it gives you the function for population covariance and sample covariance, and you want to click on sample covariance. You can either type it all out, or you can double click this guy right here. And then it says array 1, highlight the values, come down, comma, array number 2, highlight these, close parenthesis, enter, and that's your covariance. And for good measure, I laid, out, I laid it out right here. The second one is correlation coefficients, which in addition to measuring the direction of association between two variables, just like covariance, also additionally gives us a sense as to the strength of that co-movement between the two variables and the reason is because it's bounded between negative one and positive one and so if it comes out to be negative one we know the two variables are perfectly negatively correlated one moves up by a notch the other moves down by a notch one moves up by three notches the other is going to move down by three notches if it's equal to 1, then the two variables are perfectly positively correlated. Uh, they move in tandem, basically, up or down. These are the uh, notations for population correlation coefficients, either the Greek notation rho or the English um, letter uppercase R. As you can see here, correlation coefficient is the ratio of the covariance and the product of the standard deviations of the two variables. So to show the calculation here, we have already calculated covariance to be 1.75. And if you go back here, I already beforehand calculated the standard deviations of these two variables. So. Multiplying these two and dividing, dividing into 1.75, we get 0.9, which tells us that these two variables, x and y, move quite a lot in the same direction. Keep in mind that 
the top value for correlation coefficient is 1. So we can also accomplish this in Excel. Over here, function is Corel, and you can also double click this. There is no population or sample correlation coefficient, it's the same function, the same calculation. So highlight all, all of these, comma, highlight all of these, close parenthesis, and there you have it. Now though, we can test hypothesis to determine if the correlation coefficient between the two variables is statistically significant. So in a two-tailed test designed in this form, this is going to be the t-statistic. The test statistic, which has a t-distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. So now, these, this is of course a correlation coefficient, and this is the correlation coefficient squared, and this is your sample size n. So with the data we have, we find this t value to be 3.66. Against this, we're going to have to compare the critical value of t. You go to a t table such as this on the website, and for 5 minus 2, n minus 2, that is degrees of freedom, which is going to give us 3, that's what you see right here we find the critical value to be 3.182 and since the calculated value of t exceeds 3.182 we reject the null hypothesis that there is no correlation and therefore accept the alternative hypothesis which says that there is a correlation between the variables x and y and that this correlation is statistically significant with that said, I make a note about what's called spurious correlation here. And so I note here that the existence of a correlation between variables neither establishes a relationship, which is what regression analysis does, nor the existence of causality from one variable to the other. When correlation exists, it may indeed point to the existence of a genuine relationship or even causality, but it may also be simply coincidental, a case of spurious correlation. So what I've done to uh, get you laughing a little bit about the import of this is to go to this website that this individual has put together and it shows you uh, various examples of spurious correlation. Look at this first one. U.S. spending on science, space, and technology correlates with suicides by hanging, strangulation, and suffocation. <laughs> A correlation coefficient of point of almost one, as you can see there. Look at the lines. They pretty much move in tandem, almost. Look at the next one. Number of people who drowned by falling into a pool correlates with films Nicolas Cage appeared in. A correlation coefficient of 0.67. Look at that. Look at this one here. Per capita cheese consumption correlates with the number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. That's a correlation coefficient of 0.95. And there's a whole lot of other ones here that will bring a smile to your face, as you can see there. All right? So I say that to conclude as follows that one should be careful when drawing conclusions on the basis of either covariance or correlation coefficients. While they can tell us about the association between two variables, they do not necessarily, keyword necessarily, tell us about the existence of any underlying relationship between those two variables. For such an inquiry, we're going to have to go into regression analysis.